All right, so last week we went ahead and we practiced our power lines in our art book. This week we're going to go ahead and use our final piece of drawing paper, our white piece of drawing paper. You're going to need a pencil and you're going to need your ruler. Um, for my virtual students, this is the drawing paper that was sent home or that was here for pickup. So make sure you have that along with your watercolor tray. Um, if you were unable to print one of these out, the one that you were cho have you chosen to draw, um, that's okay. You can use what you have on your on the Art Schoology page. Those examples. Um, when I grade these, I'm going to look more at the straight lines, so I can I will be able to tell if you have used a ruler or not. So making sure that you're using your ruler to draw straight lines. I'm not going to be looking so much at measurements even though in this demonstration I'm going to talk about measurements but I'm not going to you know if you were if your pole was a little bit thicker I'm not it's that's not what we're really concentrating on for this project but if you have a ruler and you have a printed out version that's easy to measure then um, do that try that it's good practice so I am going to demonstrate this power line um, and everything I say in this demonstration is going to reflect any of the power lines that you have chosen. So what I'm saying is that you're going to start with your thickest area, your thickest shape, and then you're going to work your way to your thinnest. So that would be your power line. Okay, that's going to be last. So we're going to start with the thickest. And, you know, if you have the paper laid out in front of you, you will be able to kind of tell this is about the same size so you know here's the middle and then this power line's a little bit this power pole is a little bit over from the middle so just making those little marks that's kind of that's where i'm going to start and then you'll do the same thing with your with your power lines as well okay you can kind of use that same size of the paper to help you figure out the placement um using your ruler to measure so this is about three and a half inches so starting at that mark I made and making that line about three and a half inches right here if I measure the width of this pole it's about a half an inch so using your ruler and lining it up about a half an inch so that's the size of my pole when you use your ruler, make sure you're lining it up at the edge of your paper. It makes nice vertical or horizontal lines. Okay, so I have the pole. Next I'm going to do is concentrate on this slanted bar. And if I measure it, it's about four inches, a little more than four inches. And this pole is directly in the middle. So because this bar is a little bit of a ways, so it's about, yeah, about an inch above. So if I just go ahead and hold that inch, this is about where that pole starts. So I can kind of use that little mark right here to help me get it started. And it's slanted. So making sure that you have it slanted. And what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm going to draw lightly and I want you to draw lightly as well. And I'm just going to draw a line here and, ah, ooh, it's pretty accurate, about four, a little over four inches. So with this part, you just want to make sure that it's balanced, that this side is equivalent to this side, okay, because that's what it is in the, in the image right here. After you do that, you can go ahead and make it a little thicker. Okay. And then you're going to add those next bars that are holding that first bar up. So looking at how, you know, this starts in the corner, it goes about, you know, one inch in. So I'm even going to mark right here and right here, and that's kind of like connecting the dots. 
So again, using your rulers to draw these straight lines. Trying to make them about the same size um, as what is shown in your in your example. Same width. So these ones are a little skinnier. Okay. All right, then I'm going to add these little rectangle shapes. Not so much detail in this example. And then I'm going to go ahead and add these connectors. Um, these connectors are pretty straight, pretty uh, vertical. This bar is slanted, but these guys are sticking up straight. So when I add these, I'm going to kind of use my ruler as a tool. These connectors are an oval shape, so I just kind of want you to concentrate on that oval shape first. And then you can later add some zigzaggy detail. This middle one is a directly above your post. Okay. So now that you have that shape, you can kind of look and add a little bit more detail. Don't worry about erasing too much. Um, you're going to eventually be, you know, coloring this in with a marker after we do watercolor. So don't worry about that. Okay, so once you have the posts, and the bars and the rest of the detail added in, then you're going to go ahead and do your lines. So looking at kind of where these lines are located, where they come off on the page, and then it's kind of like connecting the dots again. One thing I like to do, and you could do this on your screen if you don't have a printed out version, is you could line up your ruler so that you can see that it's slanted a little bit, seeing the direction and just kind of carrying that over. And then connecting. I'm going to stop right there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. It's going in a little bit of a different direction. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. Notice these lines are parallel. So some of you are learning that in math right now where the, they run in the same directions, lines that are running in the same direction. So you can line this up, move it down, try to keep your ruler going in the same way. And then once, I'm going to try that again. There we go. And then it's the same thing here, moving it down so your ruler is going in the same way. Okay. And then same thing. And then same thing right here. So scooching it down. Okay. All right.